Hello, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS. Today, I want to talk about how you can empower your users to be able to do their own file over restores using shadow copies on Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. For folks who aren't familiar, Amazon FSx for Windows File Server is Amazon's native Windows File Server service that is fully managed, meaning you don't have to worry about managing the hardware and the software. We take care of that for you. And when you couple that with shadow copies, it empowers the users to be able to do their own file over stores through the Windows UI. Now imagine this scenario. Imagine that your users delete some of their files on the file server. Or maybe they make a bunch of changes to their files on the file servers, maybe at a contract, or support, or spreadsheet. Then they save those changes, and then, and then they decide they want to go back to the original file version. In both cases, what typically happens then is the user calls a help desk to ask them to help them restore the file from backup. Now, a better solution would be to empower your users to be able to restore the file themselves through the Windows Explorer interface. And that's what Windows Shadow Copies provides. So here's a brief agenda of what we're going to cover in today's session. I'm going to demonstrate how Shadow Copies works in conjunction with Amazon FX, FSx for Windows File Server, and then walk through how to set it up. With that, let's jump into a demo. So here I am logged into my PC, and notice I have a share here, and it's mapped to my DFS namespace, and this DFS namespace is actually mapping to a share on Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. I'm going to go ahead and open the share, and notice I have some folders here. I'm going to go into the Projects folder, and here's a Status Reports folder. Now let's say I'm working on this, and I, maybe I think, hey, I don't need this file. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just go ahead and delete that copy. I don't need that. And then I'm going to go to this last status report and open it up. Maybe this is all wrong. I'm going to just delete that and then say the status is great. Go ahead and save that. Now let's say later on in the day I realize, hey, I need those files back and maybe the status is not so great. I need to copy that status report back and put it back the way it was. So at this point, most in most cases, I'd have to call the help desk and ask them to restore those two files from the bus backed up. Now with shadow copies, what I can do is go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and click up and go right click on the status reports folder and hit this previous versions tab. And now you'll see I have the status reports folder and the last backup was that done at 1.42 a.m. this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and you'll see the files that they were as they were backed up. So I can go ahead and drag and put that on the desktop here. I'm gonna drag the file that I changed also on the desktop. So I have that as well. So now what I can do is I can close this. I can put that original file back. I go ahead and open that, I'll put it back. And I also have the version of the file, the other file before I changed it. So here it is. And here's the actual ch change that I made. So now I can actually go back. Either I can copy the text back in or I, have, I can make changes back the way I wanted to. But in either case, I was able to go back and get the files back by myself just using the Windows Explorer interface. And this is the power of Shadow Copies. It enables your users to be able to restore file their files from the last Shadow Copy backup. With that, I'm going to flip back to the slides. OK, now that you've seen how Shadow Copies works, let's go through some key points. You can have up to 512 Shadow Copies per file system. And by default, the Shadow Copies are set to consume a maximum of 10% of the total storage capacity of the file system. OK, now let's talk about how to set up Shadow Copies. OK, first, you'll need a Windows client that has network connectivity to the Amazon FSx for Windows File Server file system. So this can be a Windows machine that either is on AWS, or it could even be on premises if you have network connectivity to the Amazon FSx file system. Now, when we set up the Amazon FSx file system, you specified you know, which VPC and which subnets and a security group um, that will protect that file system. So you need to make sure that you have connectivity to those to those VPC um, subnets, and you allow that connectivity through the security group. Now, the next thing you need to do is log into the Windows machine, Windows client, with a user that has rights. So if you're using AWS Manage Microsoft Active Directory, you need to be a member of that AWS Delegated FSX Administrators group. Or if you're using a self-managed Microsoft Active Directory, for example, if you're using your on-premises Active Directory or even an Active Directory running on EC2, then you need to be a member of the domain admins group or the customer group that has permissions to manage Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. So if you're using a self-managed Microsoft Active Directory, 
one of the things you do when you specify that connection is you either you specify a service account and you specify a group that uh, the Amazon FSX for Windows File Server will delegate the rights to to be able to manage Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. So you need, you need to be a member of that group. So once you do that, you launch PowerShell and you execute the following two commands. The first command here basically invokes a command running on this, this basically this host here. And the command it's going to run is the script block FSX shadow copy storage. And you're going to set it to the default configuration. And then you're going to invoke a second command. And this command will set the shadow copy schedule. And it's set to the default. So when you set it to default, what happens is the shadow copy storage space is set to 10% of the total file system storage. And if you set the default shadow copy schedule, it's set off to go through a uh, backup every day from Monday to Friday, twice a day at 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. UTC time. So with that, let's jump into a demo and I'll show you and walk through that. So here I am on my instance that has connectivity to Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. And I'm logged in with a user that has rights in that Amazon FSX delegated administrators group. Now let's walk through how to configure Amazon FSX for Windows File Server to have that shadow copy integration. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a browser and it should be one of the first links. And what you're looking for is working with shadow copies or something similar to that on docs.aws.amazon.com. And this will walk you through the information we covered so far, but I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. And there's a PowerShell command here that's listed on how to set up the shadow copies on Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. I'm gonna go ahead and click this icon to copy the clipboard and have to allow access. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up PowerShell ISE. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here. So this is the command. And what it says is it's gonna invoke a command running on this computer with this configuration and run this script. Now, one of the things we need to do is replace this with the endpoint of the FSX file system that we wanna run it against. And to do that, let's go back to the browser, go back to the management console, and then go to the Amazon FSX area of the management console and then hit file systems. Now these are the file systems I created. Now on an earlier video, I walked through how to create an Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system. But basically really quickly, all you have to do is hit create file system and walk through the wizard and it helps you create that file system. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through how to set up shadow copies on this file system, Dean test. So you click on that. And you scroll down on the key field that we need here is the Windows Remote PowerShell Endpoint. So this is it. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to come back to here and paste that into the window. So I'm going to remove that and paste that into the window. Invoke a command running against this computer We're using this configuration. And this is the script we're going to pass in. The set, set FSX shadow storage shadow storage and set it to the default option, which is 10%. And so it runs. The next command you need to do is set the, the shadow copy schedule. So if you go back to that page, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the command to set the schedule. I'm gonna go ahead and cut, hit copy. Go back to my PowerShell ESE. Paste it here. Now again, I need to replace this, this variable here with the actual PowerShell endpoint of the file system that we want to run this against. So I'm going to go ahead, copy the, that since I have it right here, paste it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and just run that one command now. So you want to confirm? Yes. So if you notice here, that first command, it's basically when it ran, it told me the space that's allocating for the shadow copy. And if you notice, it's about 10% of the total storage space. Now, when I run the second command, it's going to set, set the FSX shadow copy schedule to the default value. And if you look here, it's set up to run basically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 7 in the morning UTC time and at 12 UTC time. 
So th now that we've done that, we've set up the default configuration for Amazon FSx for Windows File Server with Shadow Copy integration. Now let's say you didn't want to use those default commands, but you wanted to set up a custom schedule. One of the other things you can find on this page is if you scroll down, for example, if you wanted to set up a custom schedule, there's a link here of how to, if you wanted to create a custom schedule to do that. So you can click that link and it takes you to a page that lists some additional commands and walks you through how to set up either the custom schedule or to change the shadow copy storage amount off the default. It walks through all those options on that. We're not going to go through that in this video, but I just wanted to provide the information to show you have it if you wanted to change the default configuration. With that, I'm going to flip back to the slides. So in the last demo, I showed you how to set up shadow copies with Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. And also highlighted some documentation on how to change where to go to look to change some of the default configurations that we set up. I wanted to walk through some of the commands here next. So if you wanted to change some of the default uh, settings of the shadow copy, you would initiate a remote PowerShell to the Amazon FSx for Windows File Server file system. And the command would look like this. You enter a PS a PowerShell session, configure and the, put the dash computer name, and this is where you'd paste in the FSX file system remote PowerShell endpoint that we did in the demo. And then you instead of the, the configuration here, you put FSX remote admin, hit enter, and that'll open up a PowerShell window that allows you to run commands, PowerShell commands, on the FSX, Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system server itself. And the first command I wanted to highlight is this one, new FSX shadow copy. And this command is very useful if you want to take a backup uh, a shadow copy backup right now. As I mentioned by default, it happens at 7 a.m. and 12 noon UTC time, but that's sometimes not convenient, especially when you're doing a demo. So this is what I actually initiated to take a, a copy, a shadow copy backup, so I could demonstrate it to you. Some other commands that are pretty useful is this one here: get FSX shadow copies, which you can see the shadow copies that have been backed up. See the current FSX shadow copy schedule, and also how to hear it, how to change the FSX shadow storage size. You know, by default, if you notice, we used a default command, but in this case, you can set it to 20%, instead of the 10% default. So on this slide, I want to provide some additional references for your information. Here's the documentation, and I, we searched through it in the demo, but I wanted to provide the link for you. Also, I recorded some additional videos on how to set up the FSX, Amazon FSX for Windows File Server file system, and also how to set up DFS integration with that, in some other videos. So I highly recommend watching those if you missed those. And with that, I wanted to thank you for joining. Take care.